This is difficult teaching. Teaching that we rather not hear. And we can get stuck. I can get stuck with all this talk of damnation and end and this talk of judgment. We all feel the anxiety of it, as we should. It is the third Sunday of Advent. We are getting nearer this celebration. And as we get nearer, we have more thinking to do about what it means to be God's people, about what it means to need a Savior. And so today, John the Baptizer enters into the picture and begins to preach at us, so preachy, fruit of vipers, he said. He calls us to bear fruit worthy of repentance. And our initial response is to step back, to shudder a bit. A bit. We don't want to hear from this prophet. And the reality of it is that often we don't want to hear from prophets. See, prophets have an eye for what's happening in the world today. They have an eye for the way that, that God's vision for the world doesn't match where we are in this particular moment. They have an eye to our hearts and our minds to call us into a new day. And we know that any time that someone calls us out, our tendency is to build our defenses. That's my tendency. That's your tendency. That's why in some of the conversations that I have, especially in difficult conversations, uh, I've heard the language from some folk uh, calling people in, not out, but in. So, so can you hear this word today, I say calling in, as an invitation into relationship, as an invitation into that metanoia that we discussed last week, uh, that change of direction, that change of heart and life, that joyous opportunity to walk towards a new day. That's the invitation today for us. And may we, like those who heard this message long ago, then turn to curiosity. Did you hear the text? They, they go, okay, John the baptizer, what are we to do? Tell us. We don't know. We are lost. We, we are curious. We are wondering. We too are seeking new life. That's why we've come all the way down here to the wilderness to see you, because we, we recognize our need for a new day. And so thankfully, John, the one who prepares the way, speaks to that need to know, to what are we to do with some answers. Now, those answers are very specific. He uh, uh, tells the crowds, so the average people like you and I, he, he tells us, hey, if you have two coats, uh, share one with those who need it most. And if you have food, uh, share the food that you have with those who need food. So that, that's a word for, for all of us to, to share what we have. But then he has another word to to the tax collectors, uh, stop being so greedy and overcharging people. Okay, that, that makes sense to you and I to be honest in their dealings with folk. Um, and then to the soldiers, uh, there's a word for them too. Uh, he, he says to the soldiers, hey, stop extorting money from people. Just be happy with your wages. Be happy with your role in society and just do good. So what are we to do with these words of wisdom from this prophet? Well, the first thing that we want to remember is that, that the prophet in this setting, in this gospel according to Luke, it is speaking to us because the gospel according to Luke is calling us to turn everything upside down. All the assumptions we've made 
about the world and the way the world should work should be turned upside down. And so, so Luke is calling us to that reversal. And that reversal includes all of us. Whether you're the average Joe or, or you're the tax collector, which is someone in, in authority in this society, someone uh, who people knew extremely well, or, or you're the soldier, uh, law and order, right? You're the person who makes sure that people are kind of behaving and things like that. Uh, whoever you are in the social strata, uh, the gospel is calling you to, to this transformation, to this new way of thinking and being in the world wherever we are. And so, on this third week of Advent, we are called to do the same, to be participants in the reversal of God who comes into the world over and over again through Jesus Christ and transforms all things. So, so it's action. It is action. It's not just heady comprehension. It is a, a transformation in the way we understand ourselves and our neighbors. And so, so we are called to share of what we have. That shouldn't surprise us, people of God. That shouldn't surprise us. We're, we're called to share. We're called to evaluate uh, what we have and ask the question, do we need more than what we have? Do we have enough? Uh, recently, in a class on the practices of justice, uh, I shared that, to me, one of the practices of justice is simplicity. And so it's, it's that call to kind of look at our closets and wonder, do I have enough? So two coats, can I share one? Uh, to look at our pantries and our refrigerators and ask the question, do we have enough? Do I have something to share with my neighbor? Uh, to evaluate how much uh, food we're wasting uh, every week or, or how much clothes we don't even wear and give it away to goodwill, right? Uh, to, really, to really think deeply about our patterns of consuming and asking the question, how can we be transformed so that our neighbors are in a better place so that they can hear good news, so that they can find healing and wholeness and new life and salvation? That's for all of us, no matter where we are. But what about those who might have some power over us? What about those people in arenas that guide the common life? Religious leaders, political leaders. In this case, people like tax collectors. How are you using your office, your role, your position of power in a way that helps those who need it most, find freedom, abundance, joy. How, how do we, who are in positions of authority over others, uh, exercising that authority in ways that help those who most need it have a good life, <laughs> an abundant life? And will that require some sacrifice on our behalf? I mean, after all, the reality of first century Judea uh, was that these tax collectors were becoming extremely wealthy on the backs of the people they were taxing because they were taxing way beyond what Rome required. That's how they made their money. So we asked the question, how are we making our resources? How are we building the wealth we have, whatever we have, whatever, however little, how are we doing that? And how is that affecting our neighbor? How is that affecting those who need it most? And then for those of us who exercise authority around law and order, like these soldiers did, are we using that authority to serve neighbor? to serve the community, to serve the common good? Are we behaving towards that other in a way that humanizes them? Again, that's another one of those practices of justice that I like to speak about is, is to humanize the other. And are we calling upon all of those in those positions of authority to that kind of accountability for their work and their life and their behavior 
in the everyday of life. So people of God, here on this third week of Advent, there's something for all of us, no matter who we are, to be participants in the reversal of a God who breaks into history and to be actively engaged in that work together, whoever we are. We've been asking the question, what does love look like? In this season, love looks like this. Us willing, all of us willing to engage in the active work of paving the way. Us uh, being willing to look within ourselves and ask the question, do we have enough? Us being willing to, to analyze the way we use power in our everyday life and is that power being used in a way that honors neighbor and that honors abundance and that honors common good and that honors the dignity of each human whom God made? Us uh, calling those around us to accountability who exercise power and asking the same questions of them, not with hatred, not with contempt, not with anger, but with an invitation to community with an invitation to wholeness and healing, to an invitation to humanizing our neighbors so that the kingdom of God can be rehearsed, so that the kingdom of God can be seen, so that the hope that we await can be experienced. You want to know what love looks like? Though this is difficult, though we rather ignore it, Love looks like this. Amen.